Hello, welcome to the Accountable Love Podcast, where love means being accountable. My name is Aziz, and today we're going to discuss how we are allies. Now, you hear me say in the intro that we are allies, and that's what we we will be discussing. But when do we stop remembering that we're in relationships to be allies? Why do we start competing with one another when we're supposed to be enhancing and advancing each other? Now, what do we mean by enhance? Enhance is finding where you can actually enhance somebody's life. You can actually be a part of advancing their life. Find out what purpose you serve within their life and serve that purpose. Be delicate, be dedicate, be dedicated, excuse me, and diligent in fulfilling those actual goals. On a daily basis, be consistent. All we want in life is people we could depend on, people that are consistent, people that have dependability down to a science. We want to know that we can rely on people. We want support. So why do we start making our support, our allies, our enemies? We start competing with them. We start seeing their successes as our failures. We stop living collaborative and start living individualistic. When we set out to find people that are there to support us, to find people that we love, to find people that we care about, to find people we belong with, to find people that we are building a life with. When do we start just pursuing our individual goals above the collective needs and the collective goals? Think about this. We're in friendship. If you can't go to a job and drop everything when your friends in need to go support them, then you're putting the job and your personal pursuit over your friendship. Yes, you could have had the job before your friendship. Yes, you could have been, could be a job that you're dedicating and you're giving back to the world. But you do that on a daily basis. You're consistent and dedicated to that occupation. But at some point, there's something that supersedes that. And that has to be our connections. That have to be, has to be our loved ones. We do it for kids. We do it for our spouse. And sometimes we get away from doing it for our spouse and we start to put things ahead of people. We start to put pursuits ahead of connections. We start looking at those things are hindering us, holding us back as opposed to propelling us and building an ally, a fellowship, a commitment, a friend, a spouse, a bond with our children. Now. As I said five seconds ago, it's, we're easy, it's easy for us to justify showing up for our children because they are made of us and from us, right? So we have a connection there. Every time they succeed, we feel some sense of success ourselves. But why can't we feel the same for our spouse and our friends? Friendship gets put on the back burner. And as we always say, friends and friendships are the focus of every relationship. If you have a friendship with your French, excuse me, if you have a friendship with your children, the relationship and bond is stronger. If you have a friendship with your spouse, the relationship and bond is stronger. And if you are a dedicated friend, you tend to be a more dedicated person and a more fulfilled person and a more, you know, upstanding person. So honor that. But why do we put things and pursuits ahead of our friendships? When did they become our enemies and not our allies? It's when we started to look at the fact that that person walking by can satisfy us more than the people that's in our life. We stopped being grateful. We, start, we stopped wanting to put in the work. We started looking at them as a job and not a joy. Think about this. When you look around you, why are we complaining about the people in our lives? Yes, they can be a hindrance at times. That's why we put forth the effort to correct them. Yes, they can pull us down at times. That's why we tell them we're going to let them go if they don't start climbing 
with us and working with us. Yes, there are people that we have come across that we have given the label family, have given the label friend, have given the label spouse. Yes, we even have kids that we really don't like. We don't like how they turned out. Yes, all those things are true. And yes, we're not advocating for you to keep negative people in your life. But when you have positive people in your life, and let me be clear here, positive people challenge you the most. Positive people make sure that they pull the best out of you at all times. Positive people are there for the joys, but they're also not standing for you sitting still in the negativity. So they're not going to be sympathetic. They're going to be empathetic. They're going to understand where you're at, but they're also going to push you to get out of that situation. So they can be some of the toughest friends. They could be some of the hardest friends. They could have, they could be some of the hardest relationships. Your kids that hold you accountable and make sure that you honor your promises. Those are the kids that are going to be the hardest to parent, but they're going to be the most fulfilling adults and they are going to have the best relationship when they become adults. Why? Because they also have a sense of duty. They already have a sense of self and a sense of morale and moral fiber, but yet we turn them into our enemies. And then the person that's telling us, let's go smoke, let's go chill, let's go relax, let's go spend money on vacation, let's go get away, let's go do all the things that are escaping, do all the things that seemingly are fun, but don't help you repair anything that's in your life that is broken. We tend to call those our closest friends. We tend to ask our closest friends and our most, you know, our most supportive allies to enable us in the same way. Or they're not being friends. They're judging. They're being judgmental. But those are our allies. Why do they become our enemies? Because they're not co-signing negativity. They're not telling you to get less healthy. They're telling you to get more healthy. That means maintaining the standard. They're telling you to love them back, not just wait for them to love you. They're asking you to show that you love them as well by doing the things necessary to maintain the relationship. But we call them judgmental. We call them sticklers. We say that they are rigid. All the negative names we can think of that can be positives and can be looked at as positives, but in our society, we see them as negative because they're unyielding in their pursuit for excellence. They want your relationship to be the healthiest it can be. They want healthy people in their life. And they don't want to have to justify why you're in their life. They want to have a clear understanding of why you're in their life. They are not your enemies. They're your allies. But yet somehow they have become your enemies. They have become people that you feel are draining you and overwhelming you and not there for you. But they ultimately are there for you. We all know the grandparent that's super hard on you. We all know the parent that is super hard on you. We all know the friends that you feel don't understand that people make mistakes, but they're just not going to settle into your mistakes. They're not going to judge you on your mistakes because the mistakes is not who you are, but they're going to let you know the mistake is not who you are. So stop talking about the mistake and let's start pursuing excellence. They're in it with you. They're not in it for you. They're not there for you. They're there with you. And in any relationship you have that you believe a person's coming into your life to serve you, that's the issue. They are not your servants. And then when they show you they're not your servants, they don't become your enemies. You have to put in the work. Reciprocity is the foundation of love as a group journey. It's a relationship. Love is all about reciprocation. Every last moral and standard, nothing, none of those morals, standards, or core values belong to anybody. They're things you have to honor independent of. Meaning, when you say somebody is loyal, the loyalty starts with the way you behave. It starts with not getting into problems, not waiting until you get into problems and see who's there for you. It starts with working every inch of your fiber to not put yourself in a position to be in an issue. And then if you happen to be in an issue, these people know that you are dedicated to the pursuit of excellence. They know you are dedicated. So they won't put you in. So they're there, excuse me, they're there to support you. Getting you out of there. But they also know that you're going to be a willing participant in that support. 
They're not going to justify it because we are intelligent beings. We can justify anything. We can justify murder. We can justify theft. We can justify hurting people. Shoot, we justify polluting the world. We justify, you know, killing off people. We justify, we justify making insurance, medical insurance so high that people can't live. We justify anything. But your friends don't justify your poor behavior. Your friends call you out. But your friends also appreciate you and in your accomplishments. They also are there to support you and clap and be your biggest supporters when you are doing well. It's only when you slip and it's only when you're going downhill that those allies will be hard on you and maybe seemingly like enemies because they're telling you the things you don't want to hear to justify that behavior. You're falling deep in a depression. Your best friend is somebody who's telling you you're depressed. Your best friend is telling you you need help. Your best friend is now challenging you to go get that help. If they're not the person that's there to support you or they can't support you, they're looking up places you can get that help. They're looking upward. They're walking upward. They started out at the top of a hill and you're maintaining that standard of love. You don't go down the hill. They don't want anybody that's dragging them down the hill. So if you decide to take a step down the hill, you may take the step alone. Because love is a group journey. Standard of excellence is a group journey. Everything positive is all about togetherness. Once you take a singular pursuit, you risk every last person in your life. Because that pursuit might not be for them. Or the only way that pursuit is for them is when we all talk about it and we all co-sign it. So now it's our, our pursuit, even though it's benefiting you the most. I'm willing to take a step back. I'm willing to watch the kids and take more of a parental role while you excel in what you have to excel in with the idea that you will come back once you succeed. I'm there for all of it once we agree to it. And it's a positive movement for the group, for the whole. If it's just for you and it doesn't benefit the whole, it's going to take you away from the family. It's not going to allow you to be with the family in the long haul. It's not going to give you support. It's not going to allow us to support each other. Then the relationship is severed. You actually went after a pursuit that's singular. But if it's going to enhance the group as well as the world, that's what's different. Yes, you might need more hours out, but you take the time and make the time and prioritize your family and you prioritize your friends. And we shouldn't be a hindrance to your pursuit. So think about it. When did we become enemies? Now, in this podcast, I'm discussing, if you're sitting here listening, I'm discussing slowly ways that you are actually helping a person by now allowing them to pursue their personal gains or their personal beliefs or their personal, you know, occupations or their personal pursuits. But it's still a group thing because we discussed it. and We agreed upon it. Because once I agree, or once you agree, or once the other person agrees, now it becomes ours. So you can't complain about it because we agreed that this would be what it is. We always watch these movies where the person agrees to it and all of a sudden they're drowning in it. And now they have the right to tell you to stop. That's not what we're advocating. Once you look at what you're agreeing to and see the ramifications of what you're agreeing to, you know, in turn, you are going to have to honor those agreements because that's what a relationship is. No relationship is the same, but it's, it's governed by the same principles. Honor agreement. Stick to your core values. Right. Challenge each other to be the best people you can be. Enhancement. Over decline. When you find your destination, maintain it. Stop looking for more. Those are things I don't care what relationship you're in. They will be the fundamental pieces of those relationships. But everything is different. The agreements are different. The beliefs within the relationships may be different. The way you conduct your family may be different. The way y'all decide to operate your friendship may be different. Within those 
that foundation. But start seeing everybody that's in your life as an ally. Start seeing everybody that's in your life. When I say everybody, the people you chose, your friends, your spouse, your children. Start looking at them as allies. Now, to a degree, we don't talk about the children as much as I mean, dedicated to you because you had them. So that's more of a 70-30 relationship. That's more of a 60-40 relationship until they become adults and decide to be a part of your day-to-day. But they're on their own pursuit. So your dedication as a parent really deals with your co-parent. It really deals with how you and your co-parent operate. And things that y'all have in place that's going to allow you to allow your kids to flourish. When it comes to your spouse, when it comes to your friends, be dedicated to that. Anything that now hurts that relationship is a problem and a hindrance. It shows you that in the long run, that's not going to be something that you want to keep pursuing. Even if it's individualistically successful. Stop looking for more when you have it all. If the pursuit, you get a promotion, you get an opportunity, and it actually can benefit your relationship. You have a discussion, you talk about it, everybody's on board, then it can hurt your relationship because everybody understands and signed on for it. But if it's going to hurt your relationship, turn it down. And don't look at the people that you turned it down for as your enemies. Understand that you have something special. Understand you have something that's worth not breaking. Don't now flip it and say, Any, anybody that's going to stop this pursuit is a hindrance to me. No, that's not how that works. People have dedicated th- their time and effort into you as well. And there's going to be things that they're going to turn down because it's going to enhance the relationship, not necessarily the individual. Because if you have a great relationship, it ultimately enhances the individual. They are not your enemies. They are your allies. Always keep that in mind. That's why I keep repeating it. You have the mentality of these people that you bring aboard are your allies. You're able to sort through your enemies. You're able to stop a bad relationship before it becomes a close relationship. You're able to distance yourself from the right people because not everybody is going to be there to help you. Whether they're good people or not, they're not on the same path and they're not working towards the same goals and they don't have similar faith. And they don't have similar core values and they don't value the same things in life. It's going to ultimately hurt each other. So find, let them find people that's going to actually make them happy. And you find people that's actually going to make you happy. When I talk about happiness, I talk about love. I'm talking about a dedication to something that inspires you. When we look at happiness as an emotion, that's happy. Happiness is a state of being. Anytime you say now, this is something that I am, I'm happy, I'm a happy, I'm happy with life. It's happiness, a state of being, it's love. It's the way you pursue life. It doesn't mean anything doesn't go wrong. It just means I know how to make it right. I'm not going to let anything take away from what I have. And that's what I'm telling you as a relationship, all the relationships in your life They are built into your happiness, which ultimately brings you love, which ultimately ultimately brings you passion, meaning they're your allies. It's a mentality. So remember, the mentality comes first. This is my ally. This is my ally. I'm searching for allies, searching for people who are going to go through life with me, not for me, with me. Once we start thinking God works for us, With us, yes. For us, no. Once we start thinking a friend works for us, that's where the problem comes. They work with us. Once we start believing a spouse works for us, that's when we have a problem. They work with us. And when we don't get what we want, we all been there. We start manipulating. We start now telling them that they're not being the best because we didn't get what we want versus what we need. Do they provide what we need? On a regular basis, when we need to hear something harsh, do they provide that? Or are they too worried about their image so they tell you what you want to hear? Right? If you're hungry, do they provide it? But do they tell you no to something that you don't need 
in that moment or that's going to affect a need versus a want. You can want a bunch of things, but you can have a spending problem. They tell you, no, you can't have it. It's the smallest thing. But small things continue a bad habit, right? It continues the pursuit of a bad habit. So they're telling you no on a constant basis until you get that habit under control. Are they there for you? Do they have the strength to be the worst person to you, to be the best person for you? I'm going to say that again. Do they have the fortitude to be the worst person to you, to be the best person for you? They are your allies. And anybody that's in your best interest, you can trust them blindly with your heart. You can trust them blindly with your peace of mind. Because they're not going to tell you what you want to hear. They're going to tell you what you need to hear. And sometimes those things are very positive. You're great. You're amazing. You're doing everything you need to do. Don't let somebody steal that from you. You're not going crazy. You're on to something. Maybe the world ain't there yet, but they'll catch up. Or they're telling you, you need to stop and think you're being hard. You're being irrational. You're not taking care of your health. You're not being on top of what you need to be on top of. Make them your allies. They are your allies. They're not your enemies. When y'all in a back and forth, a heated back and forth, it's not about your validation. It's not about self-preservation. It's about group enhancement. Whether it's the two of you or it's the seven of you, best practice. So you should be working towards the advancement of the group, the advancement of what's going to help everybody involved, not just the individual. We are a collective. We are allies, not enemies. Even when we're on different sides, we're working towards coming together and making, putting the best thing out there, the best practice honoring something we can collectively honor. We're working towards each other and with each other, not for one another. So remember, once you start yelling and screaming and being upset and believing a person that is your ally is your enemy, take a step back. Remember they're your ally and then see it from their standpoint what they're trying to accomplish and then explain what you're trying to accomplish. And if you see, if y'all are on the same page most times, When you take a step back, one person just may be wrong, but they had good intentions. The other one may be wrong, but they had good intentions. You both might be right, but you might have to tweak it in a way where y'all both could exist in that right. But the intention is there because we're allies. We're working towards a similar goal. We just have a different idea of how to get there. And now we got to put that idea, put the ideas out there so we can get on the same page. Remember. Anybody that started out as your ally is typically your ally. It's a blind faith. We can't control what's going to happen in the future, but we can deal with their track and trust them to be in our best interest. So before you make people you love your en- that make people you love your enemy, think, are they my allies first? And if the answer is yes, rethink your approach to addressing them or dealing with them. They are there for you. They are working with you, not against you. This has been another Accountable Love podcast. My name is Aziz. And remember, they are your allies. So listen, learn, and apply. All right, enjoy.